Press cross button. You mean the X button? Sure. Okay. Oh, fuck. <coughs> oh, will you give me a title screen? Ah, kinda. Hello, everyone! I guess. Um. Enable text to speech to allow voice narration of, of highlighted menu elements. Sure, why not? Let's have some fun with that one. Come, Protonopia, Duranope, pro Law, Protonopia, Duranopia, Tritonopia. What the fuck is that? Law, full captions, Law, full well, captions. Only display subtitles for voice lines in the script. Well spoken dialogue. dialogue. Gunplay events CC. Law. Toggles the closed captioning for gunplay events. Siren sound. Explosion. Etc. Oh, sure. Anyway, welcome confirm, to watch. Confirm and continue. These settings can be adjusted later. This is gonna fuck me up so much because the fact is always gonna be a voice that speaks. Anyway. <coughs> welcome back to... Oh, welcome back. Wow. Welcome to the next game on the channel which is Watch Dogs Legion. I've played the first and second Watch Dogs, ga uh, watch Dogs games. Uh, not on the channel, but on my own, and I actually really enjoyed them. So yeah, Watch Dogs Two actually kind of gave me a prom because when I started that game, uh, when I played that game, like when it came out, for some reason, like when I was playing it, in a sense, like the next day, my PS4 account got hacked, my PlayStation account got hacked, and I was like, is that because of the game? I'm playing a game about hacking, and then my my account gets hacked. What the fuck? All right, <coughs> sure. Single play difficulty. Hard circle button back. What? Hard circle button back. Permit mode. Permit mode law. When permit is enabled, operatives will die after taking lethal damage and be permanently removed from the game. The game ends if all operatives are unavailable. Permit can be disabled in options, but can't be enabled again for the same play. Perk notes does not affect multiplayer games. Permit won't be active until the mission reporting for duty is completed. Circle button back. <coughs> Why does it say circle button back and start, start the game? Do you want to start the game with these settings? Permit mode. Off. Permit mode cannot what be turned fuck? on for this play. Perk confirm. Why can't the game? Why, why can't the fucking uh, text the speech thing say permadeath? Permit. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, let's uh, begin the game. Let's see what this game is all about then. Also, I uh, yesterday learned that what uh, that Cyberpunk is getting delayed again. So I guess next month that that's one ga less game on the list of the games to play. I only have to play uh, like fifteen others. God, next month is gonna be horrible. Well, in the next couple of weeks are gonna be horrible because I gotta go record this game. I have to continue on recording the games that I'm already doing on the channel. I need to fucking uh, stop being on Discord for a while. Just be like on. Ah, for like this entire week, I probably won't be on Discord because I gotta record so much stuff. Because I want like everything to go into like at least the beginning of January. The shit that I'm doing right now, not not anything else, so that I can fully focus on the new games. Because that's what I will be focusing on for a while. But yeah, I was excited when this game was announced. Because like I said, I really like the other games. But I don't even know what the fuck this game is. I'm actually gonna refill my cup, so if something, uh, so I'm sorry for all the noise. <laughs> Yay, Ubisoft. Ah, London. What a town. History around every corner, and a tourist photographing it. Pub serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theater, and art. And multiculturalism. And the world's oldest underground, the tube. The class of cities, really. Top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up, and one night to tear it all down. Exciting shit, isn't it? Kind of looks like Arkham.
our status? Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends about. <coughs> is this me or is there frame drops in this game? Oh fuck, I'm gonna Dalton, fail. No time to waste. Yes, ma'am. You better give me a tutorial first. Because if I'm gonna get put into a situation like that, I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm in. For now. Okay. Any idea what we're up against, Bentley? If you haven't brushed off, I might. Ever consider leaving these security threats to the authorities? Shut up, Jarvis. That's rich, Bagley. The government would sooner arrest us for trying to help than actually do something useful. Let's we'll sort this one on our own. Carefully, Dalton. Bagley, are you detecting a little worry in Sabine's voice? Brilliant. Asking the computer about feelings. This explains so much. Shut it, you two, and get to work. There she is. The cold-hearted bitch. That he loves. Alright, we're in the game. What do I need to do? Uh oh, my PS4 is making noise again. That hurt you more than it hurt me. Yeah, I need to do some fucking noise reduction. I'll just do it once and be done with it. Do us a favor and keep it quiet, Dalton. If they don't shoot me, I won't shoot them. How's that? Really? This much, huh? Gotcha. But like I said, I really enjoyed Watch Dogs 1 and 2, so I was excited about this game, but I don't... I'll leave. There's no map either. Can I get like a map so that I know where my enemies are so I know, know how to avoid them? Because I'm not good with this kind of stuff. I feel like the more and more games happen, they like to take away my map. All the way in the back over there. Oh god, there's a guy. Good morning, sir. I would like you to get knocked out. Their profiles are heavily encrypted. No identifying information. Uh, ghosts in this system. Damn it. I'm gonna get found out easily. Where's this guy going? Must take him out stealthily. Shut up, you. Do not make noise. Arm trap, what? I don't even remember where I needed to go, to be honest. There only seems to be one guy here. I need to distract this bastard, I could punch him. Hey, you! There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna die a lot in this game. of dead set gear down <gasps> and why do you suppose that is what how did they get their hands on it i don't know but someone wants to make it look like dead set was here shit you need to proceed with extreme caution never Martin. make me took everyone out here who are these men in black anyway nothing identifying i suspect that's by design yeah i could arm this trap why not Why not? Oh, fuck me. The entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Badly is that? RDX nitrogen. Enough to level Parliament. Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits. Jarvis. On my way. 
Bagley, is that not the detonator? No, but it's a transmitter sending a signal to a device on the floor above us. Safe to assume that would be the detonator we're looking for. Over here. That guy would just fuck off. Oh god, there's another guy. I know, right? He couldn't have gotten far. I didn't see the other guy. They've staged dead set propaganda all around the bombs. Is like a camera on here? These pricks are gonna blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first. Ah, oh, fuck, there was a camera around here. Son of a bitch, if I hacked that. If I would have hacked that camera, I would have known. There's a lot of fucking explosives around here. But yeah, I don't really <coughs> know what to do. I'm just like winging it in a sense. So. I hope I can beat this game. Ka! Ah, super kick. From government man or whatever, whoever it is. He's wearing a suit, so I always think like government man. This is all he's gonna die probably. Isn't he? Right in the House of Commons. Whoever these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the center of government. Yeah, fuck. Uh, what the hell? Why? Yeah, there's so many traps. Sure, I'll arm the traps. Why not? Wait, can I arm? How long did I stay armed? No, not yet. How long do these traps stay armed? This is gonna go horribly wrong. I don't even have a weapon, I don't think. And if I do, I'm fucked. The only thing I can do is punch people. I found the detonator. And it's definitely live. Bagley, I'm gonna need some help with this. Yes, you are, but sadly, I'm locked out. Fuck. Well, we don't have a chance without Bagley. Wait, I might know a workaround. We trained in manual overrides at MI5. You're full of surprises. Be quick about it. All right, Bagley, do your thing. I'm in. And the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. For fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? No. Of course I can. But I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize it. So, fair warning. I expect this to draw some attention your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counting on it. Company at our back door. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. Uh, yes. It's about to get real. All right. Fuck. I surrender. They got guns. I don't have a gun. <coughs> They're on me. I'll try and hold them off. Do I have a gun? Or are we just gonna die immediately? Stay sharp. Search the area. Nothing to report. Check it out. Ah. Tell me you heard you that. You gonna ah. be Bagley, update. Let's just say I'm both impressed and annoyed by how sophisticated this anti-tamper security is. Still working. Bagley, tell me you're close. I'm through security. Now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. I am not him. You can't shoot through stuff. Fire. 
I'm here trying to make headshots. Wait, what happened there? Oh shit. Uh, wait a minute. Can I go into options and controls? <coughs> I want to know the controls, you bastard. How do I reload my gun? On put R2 button, aim, fire, sprint, cross button, reassign, square button, control scheme, L3 button, toggle, swap controls, triangle button, reset to default, circle button, back. Triangles reload, gotcha. Problem, Dalton. I need your physical appendages now. Okay, I'm done. Somehow I'm not dead. Who's wrong? There are three slots on the left. One of them is the receiver. You need to pull the controller wire. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm fucking not. Pull the wire. It's gonna grab both of them. This gets me blown up. Kaboom! Maybe not. Bombs, fifth you. <laughs> See? That wasn't so bad, was it? Eh. Ugly, you bastard. You're gonna give me a bloody heart attack then. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Whoa. Whoa, what the fuck am I looking at? It appears Parliament is not the only target. More bombs are going live as we speak. So... On screen, badly. Fucking hell, we need to get the word out. Those sites need to be evacuated. They're spread out all over London. There isn't any time. But my sister's at the Tone Conference. We have to do something. I picked up a transmitter on the route that is sending out a signal to the other bomb sites. If you can reach it... I can shut it all down. <coughs> Sabine! Fuck! Dalton, we're breached! Go! The roof! On it! Don't worry about it, no need to yell. I'm on it. Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. A protocol is to wipe everything, including badly. Alright, wait. Resume. Shut up, you. <coughs> How do I switch Bomb weapons? R2 button, aim, fire, sprint, cross button, reassign, square button, control scheme, L. The transmitter. Options, I know. circle button, back. There we go. But if they get him, they get everything. Names, opt, locations. Okay, I'll do it the old fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay, Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, if this goes... It won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. Good stuff. Good luck. How romantic. I have the excess that I need. Oh, fuck, I wasn't even thinking of. Let me just reload as well then. Thought I was auto aim in this one. Come out, you bastard. You know you want to. Got a couple of bullets with your name on it. Come on, you know you want to. Holy crap, he actually just went into that. I didn't even see that trap that I was there. I'm here just trying to pick up some ammo. Yeah, I want to focus entirely on this game for now, but I can't. Because I don't have enough recorded for like the upcoming weeks. If I could beat this game in like a week, that would be fine for me. In that sense. Okay, <coughs> Damn it. Okay, okay. Oh, thank God. Uh 
Uh-oh. What happened? Well done, Dalton Wolf. I'm impressed. This frame drops. I don't like it. The fuck are you? The fuck are you? Ah. Oh, you still think you're here to save London? I'm afraid that's not going to happen. You're here to help us with some important work. Important work? Killing thousands of people. Thousand and one. Exactly. To save the world. You do know Londoners have died before. Hmm? The plague, the Great Fire, the Blitz. There's not much fun. But destruction is always the cure. And it begins today. Very fun party. Zero day. <coughs> My reaction time is way off on that one. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? It's time for a hard reset. Time to die. Bye. Uh, Watch dogs. Legion. I'm excited, but also, I don't know. Don't really. Usually. Huh. Explosion that devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is gathered for a series of candlelight vigils that brought closure to thousands of families and indeed to an entire city. <coughs> London is now a place of hope. Day at 10 Downing Street where Nigel Cass, CEO of private military company Albion, received a mandate to secure London. Cass has vowed to hunt down dead sex. Artificial intelligence systems and autonomous drones to capture the remaining members of dead. Kind of shitty shots are they? I saw that those bullets were missing. Posting record profits <coughs> due to brain. increased efficiencies in production and distribution, mm -hmm. enabled by the use of technologies initially developed and approved for security purposes. Cleanup as crime numbers take a dive. Illegal gambling, drug trafficking, and prostitution all down. Following prosecutions of the leaders of four of London's five largest criminal syndicates, Good. streets of Back Camden. Up. As Albion's mandate is extended indefinitely by the government, life finally begins to return to normal. Curfews and travel restrictions have been lifted in all boroughs, thanks to the deployment of the news Reports of rioting in Trafalgar Square have been greatly exaggerated. Possibly by foreign meddlers pushing a false narrative through social media. Albion is in complete control of a few reprimand the public about the circulation of fake news, conspiracy theories persisting in dark corners of the internet that terrorist group DeadSec were framed for the bombings have been roundly rejected. Our own reporters could not find a single ah, fact. willing to expound those theories on camera. I forgot to lower the sound because I like to lower the music and sound effects. Otherwise, I won't be able to hear what the fuck the game, what the hell the people are saying. It's a problem I always have with like movies. You know, when I'm watching a movie, I'm always like fucking playing around with this volume because like, oh, now there's a quiet moment and I've nowhere an explosion. It's like, God damn it, it's so loud. Then I turn it down, but then I can't hear the voices anymore. Brave New World. <coughs> also, just in a... Uh, Something I wanted to say. I got no idea what happened in. I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DeadSec alone. Well, fuck. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. Don't you dare. All right, what do we have here? I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group. DeadSec on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up DeadSec and thrown him in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined Yay. up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? <coughs> well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Give me a minute here. Shut up, you. Audio language. 
uh, music and go. Master. Seventy seven. Uh, sound effects. I like to put that down I to like fucking volume. seventy. More civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sec ever Actions, has. Actions. Circle that scapegoat. I now it. I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think if anything, DedSec showed their true colors. It's terrifying to think we harbored such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find Dead Sick <coughs> more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next I have Crypto King. How many people do you got? Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Everyone should. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen Over here. what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Any secrets? Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombing? Yes. Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom, Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared, mm -hmm. harness us with, with mind control, suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us, and, and even in death they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Well, thank you to all of our callers today, and thank you for tuning in and scouting <coughs> for the truth along with me. Next week, Buccaneer Radio will be diving into the Albion Corporation. Just who are these men and women being paid lucrative amounts for the city's defense? Are they protecting us? Protecting London? Or someone else's interests? See you next week, fellow pirates. Claire Waters, out. Oh god, finally she's done talking, holy shit. But yeah, like I said before, I don't really remember what happened in, Dark in Watch Dogs 1 or 2. I do kind of remember Watch Dogs 1. Watch Dogs 2 is a complete blur because of the fact that that's who I am, I guess. Alright, here we go. Yay! <coughs> this game <laughs> doesn't run on 60 frames a second. I don't think this game runs on 60 frames a second. Shit, the situation is worse than I thought. <coughs> Wait, you're alive? But there's a candidate. Looks like you're dead sex best hope. Da you're oh. fucked. If you call me your best hope, you're kind of fu Oh my god. Alright, I guess now we have to choose our character. Mr. Cool Guy. Programmer. Cashier, wow. Well. Hmm. I think I'll go with this guy. Desmond Go. Start with this operative. Welcome to the resistance. Desmond Go will be the first member of. Let's shut the fuck up. That's gonna annoy me and you guys. It's gonna be fun. Because this, this fucking text to speech thing is garbage. Kinda wish they had a voiceover for something like that. Even if it's someone like me who sounds bored as fuck. At least it's someone, right? You know what? I also was thinking about maybe I should have played like Watch Dogs 1 and 2 before I started this game. But nah. Oh, wait. 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 You better not have fucking copyrighted music. I will kick the shit out of you. Okay, bye guys. My kind of guy. Now, yeah. Uh, Resume. Can I please just go to music or something like that and turn off like fucking 
Chat sound volume. <coughs> Auto play music. Music. Uh, to see you're alive thank you if you're still committed to the cause dead sec needs you i'll send you the coordinates to our last safe house meet me there coin all right how do i do this all right Resume. search all that in back why does this fucking thing keep doing it auto drive now enabled wait the band break a circle oh, okay get out of my way bastards and need to go to my mission i wait how do i go to the map map Cause like I remember like the game, uh, I think it was Watch Dogs that did that. I don't know, it was like another Watch Dogs game which had like a line on the ground or some shit like that. I'm, I'm terrible at driving by the way. Oh god, this is London, right. We gotta fucking go and... I'm through, don't you worry. Fuck you. Hmm. Doesn't really seem like I've tracked it, cause I know. Ah, now I get a fucking waypoint on the ground. I had to press X, my bad. Auto drive now enabled. How about we turn that shit off? I forgot about the button. Sorry. What game had that then? I think it might have been Saints Row that actually did that shit. Yeah, I'm fucking fantastic, by the way. No one can drive better than me. I don't have to hold triangle to get the fuck out of the car. I think I need to go in here. I've downloaded a patch to your optics so you can access our security system. It's set up so that I can't just let someone who isn't dead sec in. <coughs> You'll have to do the manual override. Where? Smart move having redundant systems like that. Can't trust anyone, right? There we go. I can't do you yet, apparently. Wait, how, why? Wait, why are you still locked? Oh. One of Sabine's, are ya? I'll see you downstairs later then. <coughs> what are you calling a creepy bastard? This is what you wanted, mate. Get to it. The fuck is up with this guy's voice? This is what you wanted, mate. Get to it. What? Fucking enters a room and that's what he yells out? What a guy. What a legend. What an asshole. see what is next power up the safe house Sabine right where's the fucking light switch Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime <coughs> has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract to me. That's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, 
Wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has been extended so many times, it's like the neck of a politician that's criticised the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those contract extension negotiations went, probably like, like, a, like a footballer. In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favourite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona or Bayern <laughs> Munich. The government panics and thinks, well, we better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures suggest. I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? The moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> it's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts, Alice. I mean, are, are they paid per <coughs> dissident duffed up? Is it, is it a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what is that rate? What do you think? Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some kind. <laughs> but what, is the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99 .9 95 cryptos bargain. It seems very reasonable indeed. <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway. Because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway, isn't it? I imagine it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> I mean, who needs violent crime anymore anyway? You know, Everybody. You starve to death without even starting a gang war. We do have to ask exactly what does the Prime Minister make of all this. Uh, let's ask him. <phone rings> oh, uh, what the long is this? Hello, you're through to number 10 Downing Street. Hello, is the Prime Minister there, please? <laughs> Let me just check. Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, Andy, remember when you'd get away with prank calls without people coming around to your house to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy time. You're listening to the bar. Did you think the Prime Minister will, will, will ever come back? I don't think we've ever had a Prime Minister. Well, that's a much more reassuring way of looking at things. <laughs> I mean, what have we become, Alice? When I mean, you look at the state of our politics, we're supposed to have the mother of Parliament. Well, this is one mother that has emphatically abandoned her kids in the woods to be brought up by wolves. And let me tell you, that never works out like it does in the stories. Wolves are bad parents, <laughs> unless you're a wolf, in which case they can do a job bringing you up as a wolf. Do not give your children to wolves. And do Why we not? actually own anything as a country now? Is there anything we haven't flogged off for profit? Oh, I think we've basically just become a homeopathic Britain. Yeah. Diluted and diluted until there's barely a trace of the original Britain left. But some quackish lunatics insist it actually works better that way. It's total bullshit. Is there anything left? New on the bug this week, a new feature. The bug off feature. Uh, the person who has most irritated us uh, in Britain uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off and to get things going. I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel. This takes a while. Look, this is Britain. It's uh, history tells us this place is a bastion of freedom. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel <coughs> expressing his freedom to run a private army. I guess historically there is a precedent. The East India Company. That was a trading house with an army of 250,000 soldiers, which is a lot for a company. The Bug PLC has Alice with a water pistol, but crucially, <laughs> compared with Albion, the East India Company didn't operate its quarter of a million strong army in London. Uh, it did it a long way away, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Anyone to nominate for, for the Bug Off, Alice? I think today's Bug Off for me goes to my streaming service. I'm sick of being recommended things based on things I already like. God the damn it, that's next. recommended me to watch a reality TV competitive dating show set in a nude commune. Andy, I watched it and I liked it. And I do not want to be the kind of person who enjoys nude competitive reality television dating shows. <laughs> I did not want to know that about myself. I have to go sit in the corner and cry. That's it from the bug. Don't forget the live show that is so secret it is definitely not happening at the usual time and place this month definitely not and definitely do not not tell anyone not not to come to it it's definitely not happening <laughs> and also definitely do not so like the video or subscribe to the channel definitely do not do that as well oh my god finally we're done all the crap i was like oh look at that fucking headphones and it's like yeah it turns into this shit also i am gonna turn off the bitch <coughs> which i don't even know how to do that gameplay maybe Where are you? Where are you? Uh, 
How do I turn you off? Hello, where are you? It was a mistake to turn you on the text to speech. I don't even know what I'm searching for, by the way. Say rain. Ah, yeah. fuck. Off. Holy crap, I didn't know it was gonna happen then. That was like my only problem. I didn't know it was gonna happen then, but normally. Alright, what was on this side? Why is it? Oh god, fucking damn it, there's another one that's gonna take like an hour. Well, I got nothing better to do. Coming up in today's episode Fuck. of The Upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer London. Pretty much my favorite topic. I could talk for hours about the rise of the AI system. It's easy to forget about its origins. It's so present everywhere we go now. Bagley just kind of blends into the background. Bagley is the service AI that's present in every optic device. Whether you're using the optic, Bagley will be there. The AI is streamed to your optic from Bloom Central Command Center, and it was first created by Sky Larson, our tech hero, as part of her techno-utopian idea for the world. Why do you think it grew so quickly? In my mind, it's no surprise that Bagley became so popular. It's funny, useful, fast. It's a great companion and really just makes life so much easier. I mean, when you look back at all the service AIs that used to exist, they just can't compete. When you ask Bagley anything, there's a quick answer and loads of information available to you. One day, I let Bagley answer all of my messages for a whole 24 hours and no one even noticed the difference. The other competitors really just couldn't compete with Bagley. Their answers were so much worse, they didn't understand anything, and Bagley pretty much gets everything right first time. Do you have any idea why Bagley really beat all the competition? Well, it's really the data, isn't it? Ever since Broker hooked up with Bloom, that's when things changed. And really, that's not actually that great. Bloom has data on everybody. They collect information about everything you're doing across the web through your optic headset. Isn't the AI only good because of Bloom surveillance? Well, I suppose so, but I'd prefer not to talk about that side of things. Bagley is so special because it's been trained on this huge cache of information. That's how these AI systems work. Or at least used to work. I mean, we don't really know that much about the latest version because there's so much secrecy around the tech. But they're given this huge amount of training data. It's basically a huge database that's used to teach the AI about patterns in behavior. You know, so if you always travel the same way to your house, it can predict when you're going to go and get a self-driving car ready for you before you even ask for it. Oh, That's pretty God. terrifying. In some ways, I don't want this data to, to drive my life. It understands too much at times. Have you heard some of the rumors around the hacked version of Bagley? I've heard mutterings, yes. I've heard it's been used by DedSec. I wouldn't put it past them. It's pretty well known that they're not fans of Bloom. But the idea of a souped-up version of Bagley, given it's already so intelligent, is a bit terrifying. I wonder what they could actually make it do. Well, that kind of ended on a weird note. Holy shit. <coughs> that took so long, I was like, oh, look at that, an audio log, maybe, I don't know. Let me just listen to it, it's probably gonna take like a quick thing. Nah, it's like an entire fucking audio podcast that takes like two hours to complete, what the fuck. Alright. I still want to do some explorationing. Oh, by the way, if you're like, oh, why are you Desmond? I'm Desmond for now. Desmond will not stick around probably because I'm going to die. Oh, great. A floppy disk. Thank you for giving me this powerful item. This ancient... Really? Another one. How many more of these do we have? Let me just... Let me just uh, walk around here, pick some stuff up. Let me look over here. Anyone see another saga of headphones? Because I really don't want another one to happen. What the hell was that? I thought I saw like another set of headphones when I was like this. And then when I like, went like this. Alright, back on track. Also, the Hello recording seems to be fucking up, but I don't know. The upload. In this episode, we're talking about CTOS 3.0. The city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then San Francisco in 2017 before coming here to London. 
And every time it's been rolled out, it's been pretty much an unmitigated disaster. For those of you who are listening who are lucky enough not to be here in London's chaotic scenes, it's worth remembering that the Telecoms Tower is now owned by Bloom. The tower looms over northwest London. It's always been a communications hub, acting as part of the UK's television and communications network, although there's been some secrecy around its use. And now that Bloom owns it, it's only even more secret. Yeah, now everything that's part of Bloom's city surveillance operation is run through the Telecoms Tower. And I have to say, it looks completely ridiculous. <coughs> that silly crown it is. thing at the top and all the blue light. What's that even about? What does it do? I don't see that there's any purpose to that at all. It's a blight on the skyline, if you ask me. And it's become the main point of control for millions of people. The system network and Bagley are both operated and streamed from there too. And don't forget about the self-driving cars too. I always thought they were just running on their own. No, CTOS is the big control system behind the cars. There was a point back in the earliest days of self-driving car technology that they operated by themselves. They used to use a series of sensors to see the world around them. Radar, for instance, would look far off into the distance, while LiDAR would detect objects nearby. And while these cars still use uh, some of this technology, Bloom CTOS and its detailed maps and data that it has on London really makes Bloom be able to take control of it. And CTOS can take control of your car if you're parked incorrectly. It's no surprise that it was made mandatory to have a self-driving car. What is this? It's so bad though. It's so annoying. When oh, I fuck me. Use one of the shareable self-driving cars, I always find myself stuck in traffic jams or roadblocks. Not to mention the accidents. I've heard so many stories of cars shunting into the back of others. I think they're worse than human drivers sometimes. The technology was meant to make things better, but Bloom has made it so bad that it just makes London even more chaotic than it was before. I'm giving up on the cars. I'm only using the bikes, which are not self-driving at the moment, at least. And don't even get me started on the data. Everything that Bloom sees from your movements around the city and the self-driving cars is collected and feeds back into its big information control system. Oh, not you and Bloom and privacy again. You're a broken record. Not as broken as our city's cars. Oh, God, I didn't even know it was a transcript. That would have made it way easier to figure out when this bullshit ends. Alrighty then, now that we found all the heads for- Mother of God, there's another one over here. Motherfucker, why? Coming up today on The Upload, we're talking about Sky Larson, the enigmatic founder of Broker Tech. Everyone knows her name, but no one knows too much about her. And we only really see her these days as a hologram. She was pretty young when she launched Broker Tech, the company that is best known for introducing Bagley to the world. Nowadays, it's hard to remember a world before Bagley. And I think that what Sky Larson's done with Bagley is absolutely incredible. Bagley is the most advanced, significant AI of our time, and it's really blown all the other AIs that were created out of the water. Yeah, I mean, I can't really imagine the optic without it. But what do you know about Sky Larson herself? Um, not a lot other than that she's actually pretty incredible. I've followed her work for a long time and she's always been a pretty private person. I know that she supposedly grew up in the countryside, but there isn't actually that much more we know about her other than this tech that she's put out into the world. I've always found it a bit creepy that she's so obsessed with this idea of transhumanism. Why wouldn't you be when you've got a mind as amazing as Sky's? Why wouldn't you want to take what you've got and actually augment it by working with technology, by improving your ah, physical are. self, changing your body and the world around you, implementing more technology to extend your life and really sort of extend human capabilities. You sound pretty much in love with Sky Larson, I have to say. I can't comment on that, but I am a big fan of her work. She's been one of these people that has transformed the world around us, and just watching how her mind works from afar is pretty incredible because some of what the technology she's introduced has changed how we all live our lives, and Bagley has been this really incredible assistance to humanity as a whole. Did I ever tell you that I actually interviewed Sky Larson once? Oh, really? God. I thought she never spoke to the media or anything. So this was a long time ago, back in the day when she was a little bit more accessible Accessible. And she was one of these people that just had an amazing presence. You were inspired by her very being, and she was just incredibly talented and knowledgeable, and one of possibly the best living people that I've ever met. I'm not sure you're being too objective there. I mean, 
I imagine she's not very likable as a person. She obviously despises humanity in some way. I think she believes that becoming data is preferable to being human. She's one of these people who's extremely methodical in everything that she does. And she does everything to perfection and really tries to change the world around her and make it a better place for us to live in. If you say so. There you go, Dan. Holy fuck. Been busy with Discord the entire time while that shit was happening. I don't give a fuck, but I know people do, so... Yeah, holy fuck, it took so long. No, oh, no, 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 don't you fucking dare, don't you dare. I will fucking get mad. No, there's another one. How many more of these bastards are there? Is there another one? Oh, God, there's another one over there as well. Why? Dude, I just wanted to record for like an hour, and I'm going to be able to record for like a fucking hour and 50 minutes. What is this shit? Uh, transcript, right? This is London Calling. You're here with me, Tash, from Buccaneer. Your source for what they don't want you to know. In today's world, we've all had to get used to our every move being tracked by the optic on our temples, by the cameras around us, and with every click we make online. Seems like everything we do feeds the big data beast. Why are data giants like Bloom so hungry to get hold of our private information and our metadata? What are they using it for? Will we ever have real private lives again? What is privacy in the digital world? And what happens when capitalism and surveillance become one? As you know, we keep all names confidential <laughs> on Buccaneer. Speaking from a secure location, here's new technology strategist Charles, who worked all over the world trying to keep democracy strong in the face of the data assault. If you have enough personal data on somebody, you're able to predict what it is that they're going to do. You can tell what they might be passionate about, but mostly you can tell what they fear. And if you can tell what someone fears, then you can manipulate them and you can move them in particular directions. Like, data is collected on citizens in every possible way. <coughs> Data is collected through surveillance cameras. Data is collected from television sets. Data is collected from voter records. It's collected from how much power do you use in your house and how much water do you use in your house. In pre-crisis Britain, we got really used to all of our services being free. Everything suddenly became free that was digital. But what people forgot is that if you're not paying for it, then you're the product being sold. If technology brings out the worst in capitalism, capitalism brings out the worst in technology. Senior academic Alfie tells us how big business repurposes big data. Historically, what's ah, happened, of course, is that people have traded their, their privacy for their convenience as, as smartphones and other kinds of technology came in and became mass-consumed, mass-used items uh -huh. and technological objects. Gradually, people were so attracted to the, the affordances of these technologies that privacy kind of retreated into the background and into a state we've got now where it's essentially gone. Having this access to this data makes huge tech companies like Bloom so much more powerful than, than they would be otherwise, and not just in the obvious ways. Of course, there's a lot of uh, worry and, and fear over what they can do with the data, they can track anyone, find anyone, see what every individual is doing at any point in time. But I think there's even deeper reasons why this data empowers these huge companies to control our society and, and make us do things. So lots of predictive technologies which are implemented by these tech giants, it's not only interested in knowing what we're going we? to do, but influencing the patterns of our movement. So technologies might suggest routes to use in the city, places to go, restaurants Spaced to go out. to, cafes to go to, music to listen to. And these suggestions are not just predicting what we might like to do, Ira. they're actually influencing the way citizens move, think, eat, meet, and, and use their city as a space. So London has become a place where a small group of, of, of surveillance capitalist companies like Bloom can control the movements of individuals and, and orchestrate the way they, they move around their city and the way they essentially live, the things they do, the things they they enjoy and, and the life they lead. So we're really kind of outsourcing our decision making, I would say, to, to a huge corporate capitalist company. And there's something very, very scary about that indeed. All these technologies can be used to, to not only influence us to act as the perfect consumer, but also to prevent us from doing radical and revolutionary things. So technologies in, 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 in foreign nations 
have, that have been used are things like um, heat map features which show where populations are gathering. Uh, In-game rewards can be offered to people to take different routes. Ow. Things like that. Um, traffic data oh, can be manipulated to prevent people gathering and, and protesting, as has happened in, in some of the authoritarian regimes across the world recently. Uh, so what we're looking at is, is not only um, a set of technologies which make people behave as, as ideal consumers, but ones which actually can be put to use to prevent radical and, and disruptive behavior in the city, which, which limits the, the power of any kind of revolutionary force. So if you thought you had a private life, get used to it. You don't. And we're not going to reclaim our lives without a fight. No. I'm Tash, and you've been listening to Buccaneer, keeping the resistance informed. Keep listening, keep fighting, and remember, nobody owns you but you. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit that immediately. I don't know, I need to hear that music. Alright, was the other button my bad? I'm so sorry. Is this the last one, please? No, oh, transcript, wait. This is London Calling. You're listening to Buccaneer, your pirate podcast source for what they don't want you to know. I'm Tash, and this time we're giving a special shout out from us to the boys and girls at the Signal and Intelligence Response Service, better known as SIRS. Why not? They're going to be listening anyway. They're listening to everything. They probably know that you're listening to this show right now, but don't worry. We're not going to say anything bad about a massive, unaccountable spy organization that uses its powers to stifle dissent and shut down free speech. Instead, we're going to look at how SIRS became so powerful. And as usual, we'll keep everyone's names and locations secret so SIRS doesn't come looking for them. Charles is an expert in the dark arts of surveillance who worked to set up democratic media in post-communist states. How did it go so wrong in Britain? <laughs> You know, we're looking at all the wrong things when we look at Britain's crisis. There's a lot of uh, concentration on data and how that's been used and, and manipulated. And what we haven't looked at is the power structures and the profit that lies behind this. For example, if we examine what actually happened, you know, there's a, there's a company that's really very interested in uh, selling passports and making it easy to uh, provide visas for investment and so on. And historically, throughout the world, they've been working with this big data manipulation company in order to overthrow governments. And then suddenly, all the chickens came home to roost. Nobody could find any receipts for what was paid for. Nobody could figure out how things were done, but everybody had a feeling that something really stunk and they couldn't figure it out. And yet, it was standing there in their face the whole time. So there's a couple of different ways that we got where it is that we are. I mean, one, you have a lot of uh, smaller organizations, smaller power groups, uh, companies as well, um, who are bending things just a little, oh, we'll compromise a little bit, we'll bend the rules a little bit, um, and try to achieve what it is that we hope to achieve that's good for us. And, and if you add all of that up, what you end up with is a big wall moving in a big way um, from a lot of little buttons being pushed. But also there's this other thing that's going on here is the gathering of data and the analysis of data has authoritarianism contained within it's the, the data. DNA. Um, it is by its nature a tool for authoritarianism. Uh, and it has been used in that way. How does big data look into our lives? James covered it for the pre-crisis press. Right. Oh, thank God, here we are, James. James, me boy. Help me. We're starting to see the merger of private data and that with data held by the state into what are called social credit systems. This is where every aspect of your behavior is monitored and totted up by a central system to sort of score you as a person, a bit like a credit card, but predicated on all of your behavior rather than just uh, the money you're spending. And this can have profound impact. We're starting to see systems emerge which will punish you and stop you from doing things in society based on your behaviors and this can be as trivial as if you jaywalk if you cross the road in the wrong place you might lose points if you uh, do some community activities uh, or help your neighbors you might earn points and, and then this can be used to sort of evaluate you as a person and this could mean for example better travel privileges being able to travel first class or being denied from traveling first class to not being allowed to travel at all uh, these systems are very real wrong and responsible because of all of the data that are now held on us 
Ian was a veteran political writer and podcaster back in the days of pre-crisis Britain. Is the world we're living in now fascist? Well, this is what fascism is. It is the complete and total control of the individual. The desire to basically say to the individual, nothing in your life matters. On an individual basis, you are now part of the whole, part of the nation, and the only meaning that you will find in your life is to become part of the nation. What is a nation? The nation doesn't mean anything, right? The nation is basically just encapsulated by the leader that takes over, that claims that he, you know, has this sort of access to the soul of the country, to the soul of the people. He never does, it's just a myth, but that's what they go for. And on that basis, they take the right to control every aspect of your life, from who you talk to, to where you eat, to where you go to hang out with your friends. And what we're seeing now is a contemporary iteration of this process where you get corporations and the state operating in tandem, basically molded into one another. But that isn't that rare. I mean, you saw exactly the same thing in Nazi Germany. You look at the concentration camps that operated in Nazi Germany, there were private companies in those camps making use of that slave labor. Fascism often works with corporations, and it's doing the same now. That's the way in which they track what you do. That's the way in which they track who you talk to. They operate as each other's proxies. So if your ears are burning and you think someone might be watching you, you're probably right. They're watching all of us. I'm Tash, and you've been listening to Buccaneer. Keep listening, keep sharing the show, and keep it encrypted. I don't want to. They're watching us, but we're watching them too. Oh, my God.